Hi mm. there, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm joined by Miss Mizen Kosis Banda. Mrs. Mrs. Kosis Banda, an agronomist. We have, she has come here to, um, to our location. I, I'm not able to review that right now. To take some soil samples, she's also an agronomist, so I'm going to ask you a few questions and then we'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. What is the role of, the, of an agronomist in agriculture? Okay, uh, I would like to describe an agronomist like a crop doctor. So uh, we have two major sections in agriculture, which is the animal, livestock, and then the crop, which is the uh, farming. So an agronomist is the one that uh, basically advises and uh, helps take care of the crop side. Of the crop side, okay. So, why why do people need an agronomist? Uh, okay, part of an agronomist job is to bridge the gap between technology and between scientists and the farmer, which is more like the layman. So the major role of an agronomist is to advise farmers on good agronomic practices and uh, good uh, varieties to use and good um, crops to grow depending on climatic conditions. So mainly the role of an agronomist is to have, advise a farmer. So just to say, what would be the, the possible outcomes if I'm a farmer and I do not engage an agronomist? Uh, there are quite a number of outcomes. The first one is you might gamble and win. The second one is you might gamble and actually lose the whole crop or you might invest more where you were supposed to invest less just because you did not engage a professional in that uh, in that area. Oh, so you, you actually help us also like on the business side of it. Yes. Okay. So at what point should one engage an agronomist at the start or in the middle of the process or when one should engage? Most, the problem with most farmers is most farmers engage an agronomist once they see uh, something going amiss in their field or in their crop, which is bad. You should engage an agronomist prior starting your, your project because they should be able to help you to pick a profitable enterprise depending on your resource availability and um, location. When you say enterprise, do you mean like a crop type or what do you be, mean exactly? Be it a crop type, be it um, maybe you want to focus solely on horticulture or you want to focus solely on uh, field crops. So then that then th those are the discussions that you have with your agronomist prior and you then settle for what is within your budget and what is within um, your limits in terms of your conditions, like the climatic conditions and uh, your financial muscle. So in terms of uh, I want to farm, how does the environmental factors affect affect my my project in terms of humidity not necessarily the in terms of humidity but the most important thing is crops are selective to different conditions for example um your tomatoes yes if you grow them in winter and your area is prone to frost they're going to die you get it so you choose you choose a, a crop based on the, the, the climatic conditions that i'm referring to in terms of the amount of rainfall uh the amount of um temperatures how high they go how low they go so those are the major uh, things that affect your crop all right so we have come here to take the soil sample mm -hmm. and when you've done that you've done your testing does that determine like which crop will do or so uh soil testing is after sitting down and thinking of what we want to do whether venture into animal or crop and you settle for crop soil sampling is the first important thing because you get to know what your one of your major in inputs in terms of your project is like 
so there is something called the soil ph the soil texture it also varies which crop adapts better to this which crops does well in this type of soil so if you do your samples you can then narrow down your cropping um uh options only oh, your cropping options yes. all right so that means if you see maybe some soils might need fertilizers or yeah not necessarily fertilizers also need fertilizers oh. yes so it's like tasting uh it's like knowing which crop does well in this type of soil for example let's say you want to grow onions you can't grow them in heavy clay soils because they won't bulb oh. so once you do your, your samples and you know how your soil st structure is you can then work to alter the soil to meet the conditions of whatever crop you want to grow or you can then opt to do another crop if that is expensive to to alter Old. depend okay. also also putting into consideration the returns of the crop okay so what what type of soil or nutrients practices would you advise let's say i want to put a greenhouse right here mm -hmm. what also practices would you advise us to do that is then determined by the results by of the results of the soil testing, soil testing. Yes. okay what about to water testing Yes, also water plays a role uh, because uh, water also has a pH range. So if uh, water is um, maybe acidic or alkaline, it means that it might not be, it might react differently with your soil or it might react differently with your, uh, with your fertilizers that you have put and it then negatively affects your crop. So if there is need to alter the water again, then results will help us know. When you say alter the water, you mean like uh, use another? Yes, another, you use oh. you use a neutralizing bases that you that can then raise the pH or lower the pH to the range that you want, just like you do with the soil. So I have a situ situational question. Mm -hmm. Let's say I have started a tomato project mm -hmm. in a greenhouse, but I'm failing to to get maybe some good results maybe mid term like uh, 45 days into the into the project mm -hmm. can he, an agronomist help me from there to to recover um yeah, the answer is yes but the yes varies so an agronomist can help you maybe to recover or can advise you to terminate the project and start afresh depending on the level of damage that is there. Okay, uh, thank you. So do you have any general tips for other people who are considering to contact an agronomist or not? What general tips can you give them? Uh, the first tip that I can give is always have an agronomist at your disposal that will save you a lot it's just like having a family doctor it saves you a lot and if you can't then make sure you are a very thorough researcher and you you are always in uh, contact with other farmers finding out what they're doing how they're doing it it also help you widen your scope and your knowledge this question might not be generally to you the economist but uh, how about we are on a wetland. Can we still put a greenhouse there? You can still do farming in a greenhouse farming in, in a wetland, but you have to then uh, notify your engineer, the one who's going to construct your greenhouse, as they make the greenhouse. They have to also put uh, drainers for water to seep out and to not uh, drench in the greenhouse. Okay. Oh, what about, are there any weed management strategies you can sh show us some light on? Uh, weed management is vast. If Let's take, for instance, if it's greenhouse. If it's greenhouse, you're definitely going to be using drip irrigation. So drip irrigation is a method of eliminating greenhouse. 
of weeds. eliminating weeds again sorry uh because you are only irrigating the point where there is uh, a crop and the rest of the place is dry and also considering that it's under a shed no external water will come inside so you only have to manage with a few weeds that will then grow around your crop all right okay so today is the, the initial step we'll be taking soil samples and water samples so there are two main uh, methods of collecting samples which is the x method or the z method so like it's like you following the z letter or you're following the x letter so which means from one corner to the other and from that other corner to the other or z from that corner to the other then you come back to that corner and then you go back to the other corner so why we do that is to try and represent every uh, portion of the area within the sample okay. rather than just taking from one place whilst it might differ from the center All right. so how often should soil sampling be done uh soil sampling can be done beginning of your cropping uh, season and then maybe after every two to three years every two to three years so why are we not collecting soil samples from the top layer because we want to uh collect pa pa rooting zone pacho panenge pa from sora pa panenge pa sina chinuka kuda pacho pano inda mitsi e plant okay so what's like the the minimum depth that should be how deep should we go uh 20 20 centimeters Because no, that will be our root zone. At this stage, the agronomist was collecting the water sample from the well for testing. So maybe I have missed some questions people might like to ask you. How can they get in touch with you? Uh, okay, if people have further questions, they can get in touch with me on my WhatsApp number 0776. 896-197 they can call or whatsapp or text can you restart it with the, the pre prefix plus 263 okay plus 263 776-896-197 all right